Hi, my name is Farouk Atizadi. I'm uh, here from University of Toronto to present the joint work with my advisor, PhD advisor, um, Professor Ashish Christi. Um, motivated by the real-time video application, we are seeing that there is a uh, fundamental trade-off between the error propagation and compression efficiency in any real-time application, specifically the real-time video application. In order to capture this trade-off, we are suggesting this um, simplified so uh, mo model of the problem for zero delay streaming. Uh, the source that we consider is a vector source that is, is especially IID and temporally first order Markov process. If you consider the source as T, which is representing the frame, video frame at time T, is a vector source of length n and is drawn IID over this length n vector. And over time, we have a first order Markov property that is shown here. The encoder is a causal encoder that the encoder output at time t, which is ft, is a causal function of the uh, all the sources up to time t, s1 of n, s2 of n, and st of n. And the rate of this encoder is rt at each time. The channel, we consider a very simple, the simplified version of the channel, which is a only single burst erasure channel, that the channel introduced a burst erasure of length b in an unknown location to the encoder. The decoder is required to reconstruct the sources within zero delay and within very a specific um, distortion constraint. Uh, so as we can see here, when the erasure happens, the decoder will, be, will not be able to re reconstruct the sources with zero delay. However, after a window of length w after this burst that still won't recover the sources, after that, get back to the recovery of the sources with zero delay. Uh, we consider the lossless case and lossy case of this problem. For the lossless case, uh, the recovery at the decoder is ze in within zero delay and with, ze uh, and, uh, with uh, in lossless case. Means that the probability that the recovered source is not equal to the exactly the same source approaches to zero. We have this theorem that um, have a lower bound and upper bound. Uh, for this rate recovery function, which is general, is a function of B and W. We can see that the upper and lower bound consists of this entropy term, which is the rate required of, to transmitting the sources over the erasure-free ideal channel. And we also have this extra mutual information term uh, uh, scaled by a factor of 1 over W plus 1, which is the penalty we pay to compensate the effect of the erasure. Uh, the achievability is uh, based on random binning, and the converse is by connecting the problem to a multi-terminal source coding problem. Uh, the lower and upper bound in general don't, uh, don't co coincide, but we have some scenarios. For example, we have symmetric sources and memoryless encoders that the lower bound can be improved and show that the achievability based on binning is in fact optimal. A uh, very important example of this is the binary symmetric sources. That ST is ST minus 1 plus ZT, where ST and ST minus 1 is Bernoulli half and ZT is Bernoulli P. One interesting part of this poster is basically the lossy case here that we consider the Gauss Markov source and uh, the source at each time is drawn IID from this unit zero mean and unit variance Gaussian random variable, and over time is correlated using this equation here, which is a Gauss Markov source. The decoder is interested to reconstruct the source vector within an average distortion of D. In order to see that what's the, the, the uh, in order to present our coding scheme, we first go over some baseline scheme. Let's consider the predictive coding. The predictive coding, the encoder, rather than just quantizing the source and sending the quantization to the decoder, it first subtracts the effect of the all the uh, uh, encoder quantization up, output up to time t minus 1 and transmit this estimation error. Basically, quantizes this estimation error and transmit those quantization. The, uh, on our extreme, we have this memoryless quantizer pinning that the source itself is quantized into the co so code words and then because of the temporal correlation among the output of this quantizer, we can add another extra binning block to compensate the effect of this correlation. We can propose a unified coding scheme that serially concatenates this successive quantizer and binning. Um, rather, except that this prediction here is not the optimal MMSC estimation anymore. However, we have a loose um, prediction here. We give up on per perfection here. Uh, what first result that we can show is that 
for the ch case that the channel doesn't introduce any erasure for erasure free channels, no matter how you choose your predictor, the, the spinning will compensate the effect of that and the overarray distortion function will be independent of the choice of this predictor. Um, what we are proposing here is using this unified coding scheme here for the problem that we have by introducing this limited prediction approach and binning. This is the unified coding except, uh, uh, scheme is, except that the output of the quantizer is fed back to the, to the prediction is only the limited number of the past recent uh, quantization output. And also we have extra binning here. What we can show is that for this setup, uh, the rate recovery function can be improved upon the predictive coding and memoryless quantize and binning. And we are, in fact, we establish a lower bound for the rate recovery function, and we show that the lower bound is not that far from the, from the rate that we are achieving from hybrid coding scheme. One interesting regime that is better to con concentrate is the high resolution regime. That's a very important regime. We can show that the hybrid coding, in fact, is very close to the lower bound. And some, with some range of parameters, we have the optimal scheme. Uh, rate recovery is attained by this hybrid coding scheme. Uh, one thing that may com came, come in mind is that this is a coding scheme that designed for a specific burst length V, but it's not true in fact. This is very universal for any burst length and any type of erasures that happen in the channel. Here I have some simulations for uh, uh, simulating this hybrid coding scheme over the statistical channel model. For example, here we have IID channel, uh, erasure channel, that the channel introduces the uh, packets with probability, erasures, erases the packet with probability gamma and reveals the rest of the packet. And also here we can see another burst erasure channel model, which is a Gilbert Elio channel model. We can see that this, for this setup at least, the lower, the uh, hybrid coding scheme attains very close to the lower bound that we have for this problem. And also for the Gilbert Elio channel, we are very much better than the baseline scheme that's shown here. Also, we extend all this problem set up to the delay constraint streaming rather than just zero delay scheme. But considering that how we extend this problem, we have two different problem set up considered. First problem setup, which is a simple generalization of this, is when the decoder wants to give up for the burst erasure time and a window of length W after that, but for the rest of the source packets wants to reproduce within the delay of T. For another setup, we consider this ideal playback setup that the decoder wants to reproduce all the source vectors, even those that are erased, that even those whose channel packet are erased by the channel. For this one, we only again consider the lossless case and lossy case. For the lossless case, for the streaming with control interruption, which is this setup, we extend the result that we have here uh, to this setup. We can see that we have the same kind of theorem, except that we have a delay notation here. The achievement is again based on the random binning and simultaneously recovering using a step involved coding at the decoder, and the converse is based on considering a periodic erasure channel. Uh, for the streaming with ideal playback, we can show that the separation-based scheme, which is the, opt uh, the source code is uh, optimal predictive coding source code, and the channel code is in fact a delay optimal source code by this Martinian and Trot, can achieve the optimal rates, which is a function of B, W, and T. And the converse again is based on the considering a periodic erasure channel for this case. For the lossless case, we again concentrate on the case of Lagal's Markov source and the average distortion D at the decoder. Um, we first consider a streaming with control interruption, and uh, for that, we have a quantization and binning based scheme that attains the optimal performance in high resolution. And also for a streaming with ideal playback, we have the achievability result based on two different coding schemes. The coding scheme one is optimal in high resolution regime, and coding scheme two is in fact optimal in large delay scheme. What's interesting in this coding scheme two is that we can attain the optimal source code performance with only a look ahead of t equal one. And that allows a budget of t minus one for the delay optimal channel code, and overall delay of t will attain the optimal performance in large delay of uh, in large delay regime. Here is some numerical evaluation of rates as a, for ideal pack playback and control interruption cases. Uh, for example, and also this is the rate distortion and this is the rate as a function of delay. We can see that at delay goes for ideal playback case, 
the lower and upper bound uh, go, getting close to each other, which established the optimal result as um, t goes to infinity. Thank you.